welcome to my channel today we are going to solve uh, our given ac circuit uh, using the mess analysis okay so already uh, we solved the six problems uh, using the mess analysis okay but uh, what is the difference between that previous problems and uh, this problem means uh, the all the previous solved problem it consisting of uh, only the resistance r with dc power supply or a dc current source okay but here you see the given diagram so in this diagram uh, the component this is you know so this is the resistor of uh, having the resistance value 5 ohm and you know this is the symbol for inductance uh, the reactance of this inductance it is mentioned as j5 ohms and uh, similarly you see this is the capacitor the reactance of capacitor it is given as minus j2 ohm and uh, remaining all are resistor and this circuit is uh, this network is supplied uh, with uh, you see so you see the symbol for this voltage source so here uh, that is uh, one circle within that circle one sine wave is given so what is the meaning of this one means so this is the symbol for ac voltage source okay ac supply so this entire circuit is energized using one ac input okay so for that circuit uh, the question is that the solve current in various branches of the circuit shown in figure okay so we have to find current flowing through various branches okay so you may solve this circuit in either mess analysis or nodal analysis so now we are going to solve the problem using mess analysis okay so this is the difference between the dc circuit and ac circuit okay so ac circuit means uh, uh, in addition to resistor so there will be a inductor okay so this is another one passive component inductor and capacitance is available in a ac circuit and uh, in ac circuit is energized with the ac voltage source or ac current source okay in the previous problems uh, we solved uh, six different problem for mess analysis and nodal analysis but uh, all that circuits are dc circuits since the circuit is having uh, a dc voltage source dc current source and only the passive component resistance that is a dc circuit so now we are going to solve this ac circuit using mess analysis okay so the procedure is remain same uh, for the dc circuit mess analysis the same procedure is we have to follow here also okay so what are all the steps to be followed in mess analysis first we have to identify the messes okay messes nothing but the closed path that it doesn't have any internal closed path it is said to be mess okay so here uh, you see the circuit so the circuit is consisting of three mess okay so let us consider uh, this is the first mess so current flowing in the first mess you take it as i1 this is the second mess let current flowing through the second mess is i2 and this is the third mess okay this is the, you see this is the one closed path current flowing through this third mess is i3 okay so then uh, what is the next thing in mess analysis uh, the second step is to we have to write a kvl equation for each mess okay so here so you just write a kvl equation for first mess so we are starting here so if we are starting so this is the voltage source with the polarity minus to plus so lower potential to higher potential so this 100 with 0 degree volt is a voltage rise okay so voltage rise you write in one side okay so which is equal to uh, then when we are coming here there is a resistor is there what is the current flowing through this resistor we are considering as a loop current i1 so the voltage drop across the resistor is 5 into i1 okay similarly uh the reactance of inductance is given so the reactance of inductance in ohms is given it is a j5 ohm okay always the inductance is having positive reactance okay j some value similarly the capacitance is having negative reactance minus j some value okay so the voltage across uh, this inductance it is nothing but the current multiplied with this reactance so simply you can write uh, i into j5 okay so if you are writing so when we are taking this uh, uh, 5 and this j5 is in series so that's why combinedly you write it as a 5 plus j5 into i1 okay then when we are coming here the 2 ohm resistor is there this 2 ohm resistor is common for loop 1 and loop 2 okay and you see the current 
uh, loop one current is flowing top to bottom and the loop two current is flowing in the bottom to top so the two currents are reverse direction so what is the resulting current flowing through this two ohm resistor i1 minus i2 so voltage drop across this two ohm resistor is 2 into i1 minus i2 okay so the kvl equation is 100 with 0 degree which is equal to i1 into this plus 2 into i1 minus i2 okay then uh, similar to the previous thing you just collect uh, i1 term separately i2 term separately constant term separately okay so you just expand it uh, 5 i1 similarly here 2 i1 so if you are combining this 2 i1 and 5 i1 we can get 7 i1 okay uh, then plus j 5 i1 okay uh, plus j 5 into i1 okay you just write then uh, minus 2 into i2 equal to 100 with 0 degree okay then in the term uh, you just uh, collect that uh, uh, that is i1 term so in first and second term you take i1 as a common if you are writing we can write uh, 7 plus j5 okay similarly minus 2 into i2 equal to 100 uh, with 0 degree okay so this is the kvl equation for first mess okay this is the kvl equation for the first mess okay similarly we have to write a kvl equation for second if you are writing kvl equation 4 into i2 the drop across this uh, resistance is 4 into i2 similarly the voltage across this uh, capacitor is minus j2 into uh, what is the current flowing through this capacitor i2 minus i3 so minus j2 into i2 minus i3 similarly when we are writing here 2 into i2 minus i1 okay since this 2 ohm is common for loop 2 and loop 1 so 2 into i1 minus i2 equal to 0 okay similarly you collect i1 term so only one i1 term minus 2 i1 uh, then i2 term you collect 4 i2 minus uh, j2 i2 and 2 i2 okay so you collect the real term and imaginary term so 4 i2 2 i2 if you are adding we can get 6 i2 then minus j2 i2 okay so i2 you taken as a common we can write a 6 minus j2 into i2 okay plus i3 term uh, minus of minus plus j2 i3 equal to 0 so this is the second equation okay similarly uh, we how to write uh, the kvl equation for third loop okay so we if you are writing kvl equation for this third loop so you see 4 into i3 okay what is the voltage drop across the 4 ohm resistor 4 into i3 okay then uh, if you are writing here 2 into i3 the drop across the 2 ohm resistor is 2 into i3 then when we are coming here voltage across this capacitor is minus j2 into i3 minus i2 okay so minus uh, j2 into i3 minus i2 equal to 0 okay similarly you just collect the term Uh, in this uh, there is no i1 term okay uh, no i1 term so which is equal then i2 term you collect i2 term is minus j2 minus i2 okay if you are multiplying this to minus or minus plus so plus j2 i2 then uh, you collect the i3 term 4 i3 2 i3 6 i3 minus j2 i3 equal to 0 so this is the equation number 3 okay so uh, in order to solve the three mess current i1 i2 i3 now we are having the three kvl equation okay so by solving this three kvl equation uh, we can get the answer for i1 i2 i3 so in order to solve this uh, three equation we may use substitution method but here we are going to use the method cramer's rule so first we have to write uh, the equation number 1 and equation number 2 and equation number 3 into matrix form okay so you know Uh, the matrix so in that the first row is nothing but uh, uh, the first equation so in that what is the coefficient for i1 7 plus j5 okay so in that 7 plus j5 it's a complex quantity 7 is a real part j5 is a imaginary part okay 7 plus j5 then uh, what is the coefficient of i2 in second, first equation minus 2 what is the coefficient for i3 there is no i3 term so zero okay similarly in second equation you see in second equation what is the coefficient for i1 it is minus 2 so this is the minus 2 and what is the coefficient for i2 6 minus j2 so just as it is you write the coefficient for i3 is plus j2 okay similarly in the third equation the coefficient for i1 
the coefficient for i2 is j2 the coefficient for i3 is 6 minus j2 okay then uh, the variable i1 i2 i3 you just write then uh, the constant value what is the uh, constant available in first equation 100 with the zero in second equation zero third equation zero so 100 with the angle is zero so 100 with angle zero it is nothing but 100 plus j zero so that's why we simply written as 100 okay zero zero okay then uh, we have to similar to uh, the same dc circuit we have to determine the determinant value first okay so what is determinant the determinant of this three by three matrix okay so in as usual procedure you just find the determinant so the seven plus j5 multiplied with this two component minus of this two component okay so here j2 into j2 so we can get a j squared into four so what is the answer for j squared okay the j squared is nothing but minus one so the answer for j squared is minus one uh, so that's why minus of j squared four so it is said to be plus four okay similarly minus of minus plus two into uh, minus two multiplied with the six minus j2 minus zero then plus the last term is zero okay then you just expand it uh, this six minus j to the whole squared you just expand this in a minus b the whole squared formula okay uh, while uh, a minus b whole squared formula if uh, j squared it will come means the answer for j squared is minus one okay so after simplifying we can get uh, the del answer is 348 plus j20 okay similarly we have to find uh, the del i1 value what is del i1 so already you know in this uh, the, in this three cross three matrix you just replace this first column okay this 7 plus j5 minus 2 0 this first column by this constant value so if you are replacing this by this we can get del i1 okay so you just replace it then we have to find the determinant value so the determinant value now uh, we received it is a 3600 minus j 2400 okay so while adding the term real term you just add similarly imaginary terms you just add so we can get del i1 similarly we have to find del i2 what is del i2 the del i2 is nothing but in that three by three matrix you replace the second column the second column by this constant value we can get del i2 okay so from, from that we can get the answer 1200 minus j400 okay similarly we have to find a del i3 so what is del i3 in that three by three matrix you just replace this third column okay this third column by this constant value so after substituting you just find the answer it is uh, uh, del i3 equal to minus j400 okay so after calculating del del i1 del i2 del i3 now we have to find out the miss current i1 i2 i3 in as usual method so the i1 is nothing but del i1 by del okay so del i1 is 3600 minus j 2400 divided by 348 plus j20 so how to calculate the answer for this uh, so here you see uh, this numerator is a uh, that is a uh, the vector quantity that is real plus imaginary okay j into x real plus imaginary part similarly the denominator is also having real plus imaginary part okay so in order to uh, uh, that is uh, in order to divide this rectangular quantity divided by rectangular quantity so in your calci first set your calci in complex mode okay so once you set your calci in complex mode after that you just type 300 uh, 3600 minus uh, j okay instead of j in your calci i will be there okay so you just type i 2400 divided by within bracket you type 348 plus uh, i20 okay means uh, if you are giving equal we will get the answer for this one okay but in your can see the complex mode is not available means uh, you just convert this uh, uh, rectangular quantity the 3600 minus j2400 into polar separately and this denominator into separately polar and then you divide okay so there are two ways there in order to find out the answer if uh, a complex mode is available in your calci means uh, first uh, the complex mode you just select 
After that, you just type this two value as it is. We can get uh, the rectangular answer. Okay, so the answer for I1 is 9.9157 minus J7.4664. Okay, so the answer is in rectangular quantity. If we want to convert into polar, okay, polar means, so in your calci, there is an option will be there. The rectangular quantity, we may convert into polar and the polar quantity, we may convert into rectangular. Okay, so using the conversion rectangular to polar, uh, this rectangular number, you just convert into this polar. Okay, so already I posted uh, uh, one video in order to convert, uh, uh, how to convert the rectangular number into polar and polar into rectangular. So if you want to uh, uh, learn, okay, so you don't know about uh, how to convert rectangle to polar or polar to con uh, rectangle conversion. So you go and watch that video. So in that I will explain, for example, okay, uh, two, three, uh, that is uh, the conversions I done in that uh, video. So you go and watch that video and you come back. Okay. Uh, I will give a link for those videos in the description box. You can refer it. So the answer is 12.412 with the angle is minus 37 degree amps. Okay. Similarly, the current I2 is calculated by del I2 by del. So 1200 minus J400 divided by this answer. So we can get a uh, uh, rectangular quantity. If you are converting this rectangle into polar, we can get 3.629 with angle minus 21.7 degree. Similarly, the third mesh current I3 is also calculated by del I3 by del. So minus J400 by uh, 348 plus J20. So you may get the answer. Okay. If you are converting into polar, we can get one point. 147 with the angle minus 93.3 degree amps. Okay, so this is about the one AC circuit mesh analysis problem. Okay, uh, what is the difference means uh, in a DC circuit, uh, there is no imaginary term. This J term is not at all available. Only the real part is available. Okay, but in this AC circuit, uh, there is a possibility for the real quantity as well as the imaginary quantity. It will come. Uh, similarly, this uh, AC voltage source is representing as, this is the magnitude part, okay. This 100 is represented as a magnitude part and this angle zero, this is said to be the angle part, okay. So this quantity, uh, the way of representing 100 with zero degree, it is nothing but a polar, okay. Real plus imaginary, it is nothing but a rectangle, okay. So in order to solve this problem, finally, you should know how to convert rectangle to polar and polar to rectangle, okay. So if you want to learn that video, so you just learn that first rectangle to polar conversion and polar to rectangular conversion and learn this. Okay, so thanks for watching my channel and please subscribe my channel for more videos. If you want to learn the remaining circuit analysis lecture videos as well as uh, uh, the MCQ and two more problems solved in that MCQ video. Okay, so all videos are available in my channel. I created the two separate playlists uh, for lecture videos, uh, the playlist name is circuit analysis. For MCQ video and the two more problem, uh, the playlist name is circuit analysis MCQ. Okay, so in that all videos are available in order, you can learn. Okay, so thank you. We will meet in the next video.